All right, hello everyone and welcome to Ask Bucky Unfiltered. My name is Ali Weber and I work for the Department of Campus and Visitor Relations. For those of you who don't know, Ask Bucky is a webcast that seeks to bring relevant information to students both on and off campus. And today I am very excited to be speaking with Duncan, a student employee for the Division of the Arts on campus. Um, however, before we jump into the questions we have for y'all, uh, why don't Duncan, you just introduce yourself and yeah, just talk a little bit about who you are and maybe why you're working for the division. Yeah, for sure. Hi. So as Ali already said, um, my name is Duncan. I am a former student employee at the Division of the Arts, a current employee as I just graduated as an Oh My First Wave scholar in the 11th cohort with degrees in English creative writing and classical humanities. So live in the the post grad well re very recently post grad life um yeah my pronouns are she and they um i write edit and perform poetry as my kind of artistic practices so i'm hoping to chat really generally about like the fine arts on campus and the various arts communities that are here because they've nurtured and sustained me and allowed me to get these degrees truly. So yeah, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you for having me, Allie. Thank you for talking to you. Um, so first of all, why don't you just tell me a little bit about um, the fine arts at UW-Madison? Yeah, definitely. So I was, I know coming to campus and specifically, I, I started working at the Division of the Arts my first semester as a freshman on campus. So I was not really aware of the extent and the range of different kind of arts research happening here, the different arts communities that already exist on campus and have existed for a really long time, as well as the ones that are still being kind of created, which is super exciting. But there's a huge range of subjects from glass glass blowing and neon sculpture to textile design and fiction writing. Um, all of these sorts of yeah fine arts programming and the courses offered through departments encompass really anything you could think of um and if there isn't really representation within the the major departments um students are able to create student organizations pretty pretty easily um and get yeah make that make that practice kind of have its place on campus so that's a bit about the range um i think one program that the division of the arts is creates um, is called iArt, which is the Interdisciplinary Artist in Residency. Um, we just changed the acronym, so I don't remember exactly what the T stands for at this moment. That's my bad. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's a, a great example, I think, of how creative arts practitioners, researchers, educators um, who work within interdisciplinary modes, really kind of emerging artistic practices and sort of just the cutting edge parts of artistry are brought to campus through instruction and there's courses offered through the artists in residence um, every semester. And this, I think, really kind of vitalizes what happens in the more traditional art spaces on campus. There are these like, you know, very cemented and long standing syllabi and um, practices that then get coupled with a program like iArt where there are artists who are blending and merging and truly creating something that doesn't exist anywhere else um, and developing that with students in conversation here. So that's a bit about, um, yeah, the kind of two different realms of art that I see happening on this campus and which I think is incredibly exciting. No, that's great. And I think, I mean, to a lot of people, the UW, when they think like UW-Madison, they think of like a STEM school, right? Because we do have right. like great programs. But it's also, I think we need to get the word out there that there's like, no, there's great art programs here at mm -hmm. UW as well. And I think y'all are doing a great job of, you know, getting that message out there through these types of programs. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so I know you talked a little bit about types of subjects students can study. So what specific subjects can students major in here at UW? Yeah, definitely. So students can study and receive majors or receive degrees in art, art history, arts administration, communication arts, which encompasses film, radio, and television, um, English creative writing, dance, interior architecture, interdisciplinary theater studies, landscape architecture, music, 
textiles and fashion design, as well as theater and drama. So I think that's around 13. Um, so there's a lot. And that is all of the sort of curricular kind of artistic offerings here and ways to get those degrees. But then there are all of these co-curricular and extracurricular opportunities um, because so much arts programming um, and a lot of arts courses within the departments can be taken without prerequisites and a major declaration. There are these entry level classes that are open to anyone in all these departments. So for students who are artists or want to develop an artistic practice or just want to have that sort of variety within their perhaps STEM course load, um, those opportunities exist too. And I, do, I don't think enough students know that um, you don't have to be an art major to, in, and I say art major to uh, apply to anyone, not just visual arts, um, but all of those majors that I just listed. Um, you don't have to be bound to that school or, you know, give up a biology major to take a dance class. That is possible. You can make that happen on this campus. And it's truly those are like the really exciting classroom spaces that I've been in as an artist when you have, you know, these really different perspectives and levels of experience. So those are that's a bit about the co-curricular and extracurricular opportunities. And also there's a huge community in Madison, both on campus and off campus that offers really free, accessible um, and open programming to anyone interested in the arts. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of places like the unions on campus, um, the studio, which is a space that I could talk about a bit more a bit later, um, as well as these local theaters and performance venues that UW students can get discounted admissions to. Um, as well as the Chazen and then all of the kind of events that pop up through the IART program, which the division runs. Um, there's also 36 public art galleries around campus, um, which includes those at the Chazen, which has over like 20,000 pieces of art. Um, it's one of the largest university art museums. So that's another uh, open, accessible, free to UW Madison students um, art space on campus. And then yeah, there are these. I think you'll be challenged to find a building on campus that doesn't have some sort of artistic um, element featuring into the building, and whether that's the interior or the exterior. So it's quite literally everywhere on campus. You just have to pay attention. <laughs> it really is. I was mm -hmm. going to say maybe not humanities, but I'm like, no, humanities might be the most <laughs> totally. It interesting building on campus that's yeah. for sure. such a brute is such a brutal quite literally a brutal um <laughs> building uh and yeah then the inside is really beautified i think with <laughs> visual art and then the, yeah music folks that used to be there all that yeah, no, no it's awesome um so you did mention that a little bit when you were talking about the majors um for the arts at uw so if a student would like to continue practicing art but not necessarily I don't know, major in it, or maybe they don't necessarily have time to take credits in, you know, a specific class. Where would you suggest they go to get, you know, surrounded and I guess practice art again? For sure. I think there's uh, so many different ways to tap into the arts there. I would say as a general, maybe like kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, like, I don't know, maybe like a Never mind. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you can you can find these opportunities anywhere. I think the places that come to mind for me um, are spaces like Wheelhouse Studios, which is in the basement of Memorial Union. And I talked about the unions a bit, but the unions really do concentrate a lot of those co-curricular and extracurricular artistic spaces and opportunities. So I'd say check out Wheelhouse Studios if you're into pottery or they offer a bunch of different kind of um, visual arts and sculptural workshops, all those sorts of things. Um, I know a lot of friends that just go there for stress relief during finals week. It's a really nice place to go. You can pay a little bit of money for some clay and then have access to an incredible studio to make things and then fire them, keep them, etc. cetera. Um, Wheelhouse is a great place that I don't think enough people know about. Um, a lot of the student organizations, I do a lot of work with student organizations specifically through the, through the division. Um, I have a few favorites. I'd say my like 
top favorite, but I'm a little bit biased, is the Uprise Poetry Collective, because my friends and I sort of started it. So <laughs> folks in the yeah scholarship pro, uh, cohort above me, um, we founded this space for more kind of radical um, performance poetry and spoken word and slam poetry on campus, um, got plugged into the community in a variety of ways, traveled to international competitions for slam poetry and swept the categories um, to brag a little bit. But uh, Uprise Poetry Collective is an incredible space. Um, the JVN project along with that, uh, a hip hop and um, spoken word um, teaching artist organization. They do a lot of incredible stuff on campus. Keep your eyes peeled for signs about JVN Day, which happens um, every year. I also think of the like any acapella group. There are incredible acapella performers on this campus. Um, so that's another like student org kind of fixture that I think about. Also, there's like an incredible group of um, publications. Alt Magazine comes to mind immediately. They're really cool kind of fashion, lifestyle, editorial, fun, like um, mix of things. And I'd say those are those are the places. Definitely check out um, arts.wisc.edu and there should be some some resource list of um, how to get into the the student org searching database because then you can can tag that arts and music filter and see all that comes up. Um, Every major I named has a sort of student organization um, manifestation of it, which is open to any student, not not required by majors or any affiliation like that. So those are the places that I would send um, folks who want to major in other things, but continue practicing the arts and the Wisconsin Union Directorate. I mentioned them a bit before, but those are the student committees that are housed within the unions. So there's the film, the music, food, publications committees, to name a few, um, and they do incredible um, programming all over campus all the time. So there's always events, free concerts through the um, Wood Music. Um, the Marquee, which is a film space, a movie theater in Union South. Um, they program movies to show there for students on campus. Um, and then, yeah, I would say two other points to hit when it comes to uh, students who want to major in something else but continue the arts um, or continue practicing the arts are those arts classes for non-majors. So if you just uncheck that declared major prerequisite box in your course enrollment search. Um, you'll see how many are offered in a given semester and then you can sign up for those easy. Um, and also there are art certificates for all of these majors I listed and those are mostly 12 to 18 credits. So you can do that in a semester or two. Um, and if you want to take your artistic practice to the, you know, the next half step or whatever, um, you can get that lower uh, departmental kind of um, affiliation. Well, that's awesome. It's funny you brought up wood because I don't know, like a couple months ago we did an Ask Bucky Unfiltered series where we got like all the 11 committees oh. on and we did like a yeah like each day for like 11 days that's leading awesome. up to like org fair we released it so if people are loyal followers well, um they should be familiar with wood. <laughs> yeah you've been put on that's good. I didn't I see I didn't even know there were 11 I listed like four so that's you know you're constantly finding out the breadth of <laughs> arts communities are you know kind of yeah student programming happening yeah, it's extensive which uh -huh. you know, it's a good oh sorry were you gonna say something Duncan no 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 okay um I was just gonna say that's like a good segue into my next question so obviously I mean we have like about a 15 to 20 minute time slot for this interview however I think you could probably talk for days about everything that goes on in the arts at UW so I guess for you if you had to list some of the coolest things that you have found in the arts that students might not know but should what would they be yeah i i think i've i've mentioned probably a lot of my favorites so far some of the like under the radar mm -hmm. um places but the studio definitely comes to mind first that's a creative living and learning community that is currently housed in og hall i lived there my first year as required by the First Wave Scholarship Program, um, but that's a for any incoming freshmen who are ranking their housing and you think it would be a dream come true to live with 
a bunch of uh, on a floor, a dorm floor dedicated just to people who practice the arts um, with access to really incredible um, art spaces. There's like a recording studio with software, um, a recording booth. There's spaces to practice visual arts with paints and brushes and tables and sinks, et cetera, and a black box theater that you have 24 seven access to. So it's quite literally, I've never, I've never seen an, a living space like it on campus anywhere else. It was an incredible experience. My first year, just having access to all these places to practice and make at you know, student schedules get kind of crazy. So <laughs> it, it's not unrealistic to see people at three in the morning, you know, dancing, warming up um, at in, in the studio, which is just a really incredible creative energy to be living in quite literally. Um, so the studio is definitely one of the coolest arts things on this campus that more folks should know about. Um, along with that, I would say the Just Bust open mic um, is a monthly, it's the longest running monthly open mic in Madison, Wisconsin. So once we're back happening, um, hopefully in person, um, we've been virtual this entire past year, but uh, keep your eyes peeled for the Just Bust open mic. Um, welcomes submissions in all genres, all forms, and it's always an incredible community space. Um, I'd also repeat the iArt classes are quite incredible. Um, I was lucky enough to take a course with Professor Michelle Bird McPhee and Professor Dwayne Lee Holland, um, who are dance practitioners and research researchers. Um, and we were specifically studying the legacies of women in hip hop um, and learning black vernacular dance along the way, but also discussing theory and speaking with different folks who have been a part of hip hop communities all across the world. I've never experienced a class that was so embodied and um, involved so many different sorts of approaches to the like main conceptual um, kind of interest of the course. So I would, yeah, highly recommend iArt classes. That's capital I-A-R-T. Um, you can find info about that program on the arts.wisc.edu website as well. But those classes are incredible. I'd also uh, recommend the Wisconsin Film Festival, which mm -hmm. is a huge kind of thing that happens on campus. Google that um, and check that out. Um, yeah, I think those are the like the coolest ones that come to mind for me. Awesome. And we'll everything Duncan said will also link below, so you cool. can just click on the link. Um, yep. And it's exciting to like hear about things starting to open up again. And even though we don't have specific dates on when events might happen, it's just, it's very fun to see somewhat of the end of the tunnel when we are talking about in-person events. It's totally, yeah. yeah, no, it's it's been a, a long year of logging on to the Zooms. So even the idea of maybe seeing people's faces, even distanced in the same room to, you know, snap and clap and celebrate um, something feels, yeah. Oh, really cool. Can't mm. wait. Um, all right, so just one last question. So just to wrap up one kind of, is there anything that our viewers should know about the Division of the Arts, which is um, where you work? Yeah, I think um, I talked about us a lot through some of the programmings that we for, through some of the programs that we run, but um, I would definitely say follow us on social media to know what's going on. And I'm going to look up that at to get it correct. Um, I think it's. I think I might. Is it at UW Divi or at UW Madison UW Arts? Madison Arts. Yeah, that's it. So all one word, all lowercase, no punctuation at UW Madison Arts. Definitely follow us on Instagram. Um, we post a lot of information there. And if you go to arts.wisc.edu, that URL I was saying earlier, um, you'll find a place to sign up for our newsletter, which kind of concentrates all of the different arts events happening on campus within a certain period of time. So you'll definitely want to sign up for the newsletter there. Um, and we also the another programming thing that I would uh, hit about the division, which is in the spring, um, we run the Creative Arts Awards and the Arts Business Competition, which uh, funds really excellent student art um on campus so keep your eyes peeled for those calls for submissions and applications in the spring because you can get money to work on your research to develop creative ideas um 
so that yeah hit up arts.wist.edu sign up for the newsletter follow us on social media because lots of stuff happens quickly so you'll you, you'll you won't miss it if you're on those 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 sites awesome great and those are all be linked too so i'll have a lot of links but it'll be great because you can go check them out after this um thank you so much duncan for meeting with me today it was so fun um Thank you to the viewers for watching this. Uh, this will be the start of our, I don't know what you call it, summer series, summer season, our summer clump of webcasts. <laughs> I don't know. Clump, I love that. Clump, like the worst one that I could have thought of. <laughs> um, but yeah, just um, yeah, keep an eye out for more Ask Bucky's posted in the future. And if you have any suggestions on what you would like to hear from next, just please DM us. And yeah, have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.